taught by Dr. Tom Rogers, who some of you are familiar with. He was a Harvard-educated theologian. Well, everybody in the class pretty much was going to seminary, except for one person. Yeah, that would be me. That would be the, the business student who's going to law school. But I had to get the, the credits, right? I will not lie to you. I will confess right here and now that I did not study as hard in that class as I did in some of my others for a couple of reasons. One, it was pointless because I didn't have the background that they all had. I was going to struggle during that class. I had to get the class. And uh, I was, like I said, I was working two jobs, so I, I felt like I had good reasons for not doing all the things that I will expect each and every one of you to do in every class that you take. Well, in the spring in April, we were on the third floor, I believe, of the uh, main building. And Dr. Rogers, he was about, uh, what, Dr. Magnuson, about five feet six. Uh, he always was impeccably dressed in a blue blazer and gray slacks, always buttoned. He was, he was powerful, booming voice. He was asking about the reading assignment for the night before. He was not getting the answer that he wanted from these brilliant pre-seminary students. And he got a little upset. And he took a chair over to the window and raised the window, climbed up in the windowsill. He said he wasn't that big. And he looked out at the class and he said, I'm asking one more person. And if I don't get the answer I want, I'm through teaching, and I'm jumping. <laughs> he started to gaze across that classroom. I quickly did a head count, and I thought, oh, Dr. Rogers, you do not want to do what I think, what I think you're getting ready to do. And he said, Mr. Darrell. You probably figured it out by now. I hadn't read any of it. I made up something about Noah's Ark. I don't think it had anything to do with what we'd studied the entire semester. The name of the class was World Religions. He paused for a second in that window and he held up his finger and he said, I believe that's close enough. <laughs> and he climbed out of the window. I was learning I was learning from other people, which is the key to a successful future. I was reminded of that experience many years later when I came to Bowling Green, Kentucky, um, and I was actually called upon to coach a 10-year-old basketball team. Wes King, you wouldn't want to play for my team. We were undefeated. We had the best player in the league. A kid named Brandon Wardlow who went on to play NCAA Division One basketball, played the NCAA tournament against Duke. Brandon didn't speak to me the whole season. He's a very quiet kid. I didn't take it personally. Uh, but we're undefeated. We're in the tournament at the end of the season in the semifinals. We're down by three points. Couldn't have been the coaching. And we score with five seconds left, and I call a timeout because I played at Davis County High School. I know the game. I brought those 10 year olds together and I said, gentlemen, here's what we're going to do. How many of y'all seen the movie Hoosiers? Man, we well, you know what's getting ready to happen. And I said, I played this game a long time, boys. Here's what we do. I want you to let them throw the ball in this corner over here. You two run over there, Timmy and Stevie, and then you track him in the corner. Billy, you stay back here at the top of the key and you wait till he throws the ball and you're going to come up here and pick off the pass. And then you're going to throw it to Brandon, the best player in the league, and we're going to score and win the game. Are you with me? Brandon Orlow spoke to me for the first time all year. He looked at me and he said, wouldn't it be easier if I just stole the ball? <laughs> all the other 10-year-olds looked at me. I said, well, Brandon, that's probably, yeah, that's probably a better plan. <laughs> so he let his guy have the ball. He stole it, played it in, and we won, and I quit. <laughs> I never coached again basketball. But the point is, I thought about Tom Rogers in that class, and I thought, you know what, I'm still learning from the people that I'm with. So it's really important for you to be with people that are high quality, high intellect like you. That's who you want to be with. Who's come through this place? 
Who's come before you here at Kentucky Wesleyan? Well, let me tell you a little bit. How many of you watch ESPN? Yeah. Well, the person that distributes all those documentaries you see, 30 on 30 for ESPN, graduated from Kentucky Wesleyan College. We're one of only two schools in Kentucky who produced the United States Supreme Court Justice, Justice Stanley Reed. The uh, former executive producer for CNN graduated from Kentucky Wesleyan College. And she was also a heck softball player. If for you NFL fans, the uh, general manager of San Diego Chargers was a Wesleyan grant, A.J. Smith. You parents, you kids, this won't be anything to you. But how many of y'all stayed up late watching the Johnny Carson show? You couldn't sleep, sure. Well, the talent coordinator for the Johnny Carson show was a Kentucky Wesleyan graduate. We've had uh, incredible people. My, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a minute of liberty and throw in that group. The three people I grew up with, my brothers and my sister. Um, my older brother came here as an English major. He is now the vice president of Smithfield Foods. If you ever bought bacon or ham, I thank you and so does he. <laughs> my brother Bracken is a year younger who went to school every summer. Um, if you've ever bought a, anybody knows, anybody know what Logitech is? You've probably heard of that little company. Yeah, well, he's the president and chief executive officer of Logitech. He, he darkened the halls of Westland. My sister's the attorney for the Fayette County Public Schools. And yeah, I'm bragging on my siblings. I kind of like them. But the point is, we have produced countless numbers of people that are doing big things in this world. We know what we're doing and we'll do it with you. The last lady I want to talk about, is a little, little lady, be the shortest person in this group, a lady by the name of Lou Ellen Piles. Brought with me tonight, this is a diploma. Of 1944. I hope each and every one of you has one of these diplomas. This one, back in the days, in Latin. I took two years of Latin, don't expect me to read it to you. Llewellyn Piles from Eastern Kentucky, all four feet 11 of her, I would guess. If you've heard of Procter and Gamble, you probably know about Burke Marketing, which was the marketers for Procter and Gamble. She was on the ground floor of that. She was a Kentucky Wesleyan graduate. Lou Ellen Piles traveled the world. She saw everything. She did everything. She was brilliant. She negotiated her first business deal when she was eight years old, she told me. When I was sitting on their floor in her living room this past year. And she walked by the store every day and looked at a desk. I went home from school and find the manager of the business said, you really like that desk, don't you, Lou Allen? She said, I really do. And he said, well, you should have this desk. And she said, I don't have much money. He said, how much you got? She said, I've saved a thousand pennies. And he said, what a coincidence. That desk costs a thousand pennies. So Lou Allen Piles bought a desk. It was still in her living room the day I was with her at age 91. Her father came home and saw the desk and asked her mother where that desk came from and she said, Lou Ellen bought it. He said, what do you mean Lou Ellen bought it? She said, Lou Ellen bought it for a thousand pennies. Her father went down to the store and said, we're not doing this. What's it cost? I'm gonna pay for it. And the store manager said, no, no. Your daughter's a tough businesswoman. She negotiated the deal. The deal's a deal. That was Lou Ellen Piles. Well, I want you to know, I stood in a pulpit this past year. Uh, I looked down on a casket that had Lou Ellen Piles who passed away at age 91. And some of you, I had said to you when you come to visit Westland, that your education at Wesleyan is not about the four years there. Any school that sells you that is using you and probably lying to you. 
Because this is about a life, a life of Wesleyan. We're looking for the best 50, 60, 70 years of your life, not four. But Lou Ellen Piles, her request was to be buried in her Wesleyan cap and gown. Now this is a lady that did everything you can imagine and more accomplishments than anybody I've ever known. But in her heart was Wesleyan. That's what I want for you. It's the Lou Ellen Piles model. What a real education is. And we'll do that for you. People like her did it for me. What that means is, is when we talk about the Wesleyan way and something we believe in strongly, and some of you know about the Wesleyan way, but it's Lou Allen Piles to the core. We believe in four things. Everything that we do is going to have four principles that guide it. Number one, everything that you do and that we do at Westland will be done with honor. For no other reason, it's best for you, but also we owe it to those who came before us at Kentucky Westland. Second, we will support each other. You will support the people in this room and things that they do. They may be totally different from you, but you'll support it. These incredible music people, yeah, Rashad, I got no talent, but you know what, I love going. And these, uh, these music kids, they'll be at the volleyball game. Volleyball players, they'll go to a debate. Because we support each other, because that's part of that education that you have to have. Third is, let's face it folks, the world's about competition. And we're going to compete in everything that we do, from the chemistry lab to the football field. We will compete, but we will do it with integrity. This past fall, before a football game, our first home football game, uh, they played the first three or four games in the row. It was a four, Rashad, the first four games. First home game happened to be on Parents Weekend. And as the president, I got a little worried about it. A big deal. So I went over to the football team to practice on Friday afternoon. Got them all together. The coach was kind enough to let me talk with them. And I said this to them. I said, gentlemen, this is your first home game. You're off to a great start. We went 7-4, by the way. Had a great season. I said, if you're not jacked up for your first home game, there's something wrong with you. I want you to be. But this is parents weekend. You're the focal point. I want you to act like you've done this before. Don't get carried away. I want you to beat this team badly. I want you to hit them really hard. But I want you to help them back up. I want you to win the Wesleyan way. They gave me the obligatory, yes, sir. Well, I went on the sideline the next day during the game. And we were beating them pretty good. About halfway through the third quarter, their quarterback dropped back for a pass, and uh, our linebacker, he hit him from behind really, really hard. Really hard. He fumbled. We recover. Everybody's going crazy. Now our linebacker helped that guy up off the field. And then his teammates mobbed him, and they're on the sideline going crazy, and the crowds are going nuts. And then out of that pack of football players, here comes that same linebacker running at me. Now, I had just seen what he had done to somebody else. I got a little nervous. I was not wearing a helmet. He stopped right in front of me. And he said, I believe I just introduced him to the West Wesleyan way, sir. <laughs> I said, yes, you did. And I appreciate that. That's how we compete. Fourth element of the Wesleyan way, and I believe the most important, is that we love each other. You will love each other. And those four principles, if we do everything with those four principles on the front burner, you will maximize your potential. I promise you, you will maximize your potential. 
Everybody in here has a time in their life. And if you close your eyes right now and had to reach back into the depths of your history, you'll remember a time when you felt the most alone. You're probably thinking about it right now. I'll tell you mine. I was 11 years old. I was at a new school and I tried out for the middle school basketball team. I didn't know that many people. And it was really cold. We had ice. A lot more ice than we had now, not the snow. And my mom, she was driving around three other Daryl kids somewhere. Okay, she had, it, was trying to, it was like trying to keep frogs in a wheelbarrow, if you can picture that. That's the way we were. Well, we go through trials. I'm doing the best I can. And uh, it was over, and my mom went there and picked me up. And everybody's leaving, leaving. The coach is waiting with me. And then finally he got tired of waiting, and he left. Now, as a lawyer representing the school districts, I'm now, looking back, I'm amazed that happened. But back then, it was different. He finally locked the gym and left. It was dark, cold, icy, and I thought I was a smart guy. I started walking. I thought, I'll find a house, knock on the door, make a phone call. We didn't have cell phones, kids, okay? So I got a few hundred yards away from the school, and in the dark, I see headlights coming toward me. And the car got closer and closer, I realized it was my mother. And uh, I was really excited and relieved. And then she went on by me. And <laughs> she's headed to the school. So I take off on a run, you know, and I see those tail lights come on, the brake lights, and she's slowing down by the gym door, and I'm running. And then I slipped on the ice, go right on my tail. And then I saw those brake lights go back off, and my mother left. I guess assuming I got the ride. I sat there on that ice, watching that car pull away in the dark. And I will tell you to this day, it's the most alone I've ever felt in my life. The good news is my mom took a second try and circled around and came back. And it found me. And I tell you that story to tell you that there's going to be times when you get in college that you're going to feel that way. But here's the good news about Kentucky Wesley. Like my mom, always, God rest her soul, she passed away this year. My mom always circled back for me. And at Wesleyan, we will always circle back for you. Always. You will never be alone at Kentucky Wesleyan College. That is the essence of the Wesleyan. Now, we've heard a lot of talent, great talent. Now, I want, this is a pop quiz. This is a school, it's a college. We can, you can't have any meeting without some kind of a test. Now, can anybody tell me who the composer was of the, the song Jonathan played? Anybody know? Any guesses? Dr. Patterson over here wants to play, yeah. Yeah, the answer is Jonathan Poling. Now that's the kind of talent that we have. That's his song. That's his music. Now I'd say to you, what music, what music are you going to write? What is your song going to be in accounting, in criminal justice, in chemistry, in English? Who are you going to make music with? You want to do it with the people in this room, this kind of talent. Go somewhere and write your own song. Because I will tell you, I will tell you, and I've told some of you one on one, your generation's different. You cannot come out of college looking like you came off an assembly line. The world has changed a lot. Your ability to be, maximize your potential is going to be determined in large part by how you adjust to change on the fly. Be you. Be the best you. Be the creative you. Be the creative mind. We will do that for you. So in closing, I want to say that we want you come to Kentucky Westland, make your own song, circle back for others, and they'll circle back for you and live the Westland way. Now before we do part, I do want to recognize some other people. 
Um, those who are on the Westland staff, not the faculty, the, the Westland staff, including the admissions office, if you would stand for a minute. Great, don't be shy. Yeah. Yeah. I want to thank these people. We're all the thank you for the Kentucky Westland College. It's an incredible group of people. Um, and the admissions folks who put on this event, you've done an amazing job as always. For you students and parents, these are the folks that you can always go to in the process, and they will help you. Uh, we have an incredible, like I said, incredible group of people, and uh, West is an amazing place. So I want to thank you for being here with us this weekend. I want to thank you for allowing me a little bit of time to share with you. You're amazing, amazing young people. And you've got an incredible experience waiting for you at Kentucky Westland. Thank you. And with that, good luck tomorrow. Have fun at your interviews. They'll be fine. There's a lot of nice people. And uh, travel safely. We'll see you in the morning. <laughs>